In this video clip, I'm going to show you how to design your database from the information we've got in the scenario and the sample data. We're going to use the entity relationship diagram method. You can use at normalization as in normalizing first, second, third, normal form. But in this exam, you don't have to provide evidence of how you've normalized your data. So it's quite quick and easy, I think, to use this ERD method. The first thing we know is we, when we looked at the data, we got three entities. We've got staff, we've got grade, and we've got position. And if you remember, I identified these from the primary keys. So I'm just going to draw on a page here. I'm just in one note doing this. Drawn my three entities. So our entities were drawing a box. Remember, an entity is something in the real world that we're going to store data about. I'll put the names of the entities in the boxes. So we've got staff, we've got grade, and we've got position. The next thing to do on the ERD is to draw on the relationships and put the primary keys on. Shall we do the primary keys first? So the primary key for grade was grade ID, the primary key for position was position ID, and the primary key for staff, staff ref. And you'll notice I've underscored those which indicates a primary key. I'll put on the relationships now. So we said a staff has a grade and that a grade can be used on many staff. So we put the many side. A member of staff, we said that a staff can hold many positions. And we also said a position can be held by many staff. What we've got there is our very basic ERD. And I can immediately see we're going to have an issue here to sort out. We have got a many-to-many -many relationship between staff and position. Now, in Access, a relational database, you can't implement many-to-many -many relationships. So what we've got to do is resolve this. We do this by creating a new entity that goes between the two entities in the many-to-many -many relationship. And what that does is it creates two one-to-many relationships. So what I'm going to do now is just redraw the entity relationship diagram and I'm going to put in the new entity between staff and position. We've got staff that we had before with the staff ref as the primary key. We had grade, that's just what we had before. The grade ID is the key. And the relationship there was as before, it's a one to many. I'll put on the position a bit lower down with the position ID as the primary key. Okay, so what we're going to do now is put this entity in between staff and position. So I'm going to draw a new box and call that staff position. It's normal to take the name for this new entity from the two entities that you've split up. And then we can put on the relationships now. So if you remember, a member of staff can have a number of positions. So we've got staff to position, we put on the many side of the relationship. And we also said a position can be held by many staff. So there's the relationship and the many is on the staff side. So you can see there now, uh, we've got two one-to-many relationships now. We've got staff that's got a many relationship with staff position. And we've got position that's got a many relationship with staff position. We'd just like to find the primary key for this new entity. Now, remember on the paper it says you can't use any other attributes other than the ones listed. It's normal practice like it, to take the primary keys from the two entities that you've split up and together they make up the primary key for the new entity. So we need staff ref and we need position ID. So we've got the key for the new entity right, and that key is made up of two attributes 
and we've taken the attributes from the two entities that we have split up. Okay, the next thing we need to do is just identify the foreign keys, and this is really easy to do with this ERD method. So what we do is we look at the many side of the relationship. So uh, we're going to look at the staff side, that many there. What we need to do is take the primary key from the one side and put it in as a foreign key on the many side. So in this case, we've got the many side on the staff. We go to the one side, grade, and we need grade ID as a foreign key. Just have a, an asterisk behind it, and the asterisk denotes that it is a foreign key. Let's have a look at these many-to-many -many relationships on staff position as well. Let's take the relationship between staff and staff position. Okay, this one here. What we do is go to the one side of the relationship. We find the primary key. So the primary key of staff is staff ref. So the foreign key in staff position is that staff ref. Now we've already got it because we've put it on as a part of the primary key. So we just put an asterisk behind it to denote that it is a foreign key as well. Okay, let's have a look at this last one. And this last one is we're looking at this many relationship between position and staff position. We look at the many side. Right, that's where the foreign key is going. Go back to the one side and get the primary key. And that primary key is a foreign key on the many side. Now, again, we've already got this because we've put it in as part of the primary key. So all we need to do is put the asterisk behind it. Let me just highlight those again. So this one, the grade ID, the pink one, okay, is the staff ref. And then the one between position and staff position, that's the, the one that I highlighted in the uh, other colour, the final colour. So you can see them sort of adding, lining up if you like. What we've got to do now, before we get on to access again, is just add the other attributes. So I know there was a grade descriptor and that obviously goes with grade. I'm just going to put grade des for description. You can shorten these attribute names, you can change them if you like, but just make it clear to the examiner what you're doing. Position ID, there was a attribute called position. I'll just put that. We'll put the staff uh, attributes in as well. Uh, there was a staff name, surname. Each member of staff had a start date and each member of staff had a leave date. And we also, each member of staff had a telephone number. So all those attributes go in staff, along with that grade ID as a foreign key. The only things that we've got left now is that position start date and position end date. Now, with it having position in front, you might be tempted to put it in with position. But what you have to bear in mind is each member of staff has a position start date and a position end date for each position that they have, and that's for each member of staff. So therefore, the start date, end date for the position needs to go in staff position, because each start and end date is dependent on both the staff ID and the position ID. So we'll just pop these, I'll call it uh, pause, start, date, and pause. And uh, it's a good idea at this point to uh, just go back and check, make sure you've got all the attributes in, you haven't introduced any new ones. Remember, this is just your own sketch, you don't have to provide it for the examiner. It's just to help you create your database in uh, Access and hopefully do it accurately right from the start. Suggest you watch the video again on this. 
in the next video I'm going to show you how to create your tables and the relationships in Access based on the design that we've done here.